Winter cut day 71. How are you guys doing? We're gonna have a little protein shake talk. We're gonna discuss some things about how the cut's going and what I'm gonna do in the future for this cut. And yeah, let's get this going. So basically guys, I, I don't wanna say I've had a lot of rebounds in this cut. You know, a lot of random events where I gain pretty significant amounts of weight, but I kinda have. Low key, you know, I've been disciplined for like 15 pounds to lose weight and then I'll gain like five and then I'll lose another 15 and then I'll gain like 10. And that's just kind of how it's been going lately. Right. But, you know, obviously, if you're trying to commit to the cut or trying to really just get good, solid, long term gains, you want to get through the, you know, getting smaller phase as fast as you can. So that way you can get growing again, right? And I have unfortunately wasted a lot of time on this cut by refeeding and cheating and not being as disciplined as I'm capable of. But I have also spent a lot of time being disciplined and being consistent enough to lose 30 pounds so far. So that begs the question, how much longer am I gonna continue this cut? And do I plan on slipping up at all from this point forward? And my answer would be, yes, I'm going to continue this cut. Yes, I'm going to get extremely lean. And uh, I don't plan on slipping up at all from this point forward. I'm going to get in, you know. <sighs> Let's think. Probably, hopefully, a minimum 10,000 steps a day. Um, sometimes it's hard to get in more just because random stuff comes up and I'm fairly busy. But, <clears throat> you know. Especially like if I take time, for example, when I edit these videos, I could just literally like walk while I edit these videos, which is really, really useful. Um, because not only am I burning calories, um, but I'm also making a more efficient use of my time. But no more slip ups. No more slip ups from now on, because while I have made actually really incredible gains during this cut, strangely enough, um, I want that to be exponentially increased during the bulk, right? I want to make it so that way, like if I'm progressively overloading now, like honestly, just think about how much the bulk will net me long term. Like imagine me going up to, you know, 180 again and just seeing how much leaner I am at that weight than I was before. I mean, I'm basically getting beginner gains from training with a scientific approach. Not to get nerdy on you guys, but, you know, I have seriously made beginner gains for the, like the second time and it's just kept coming. Like not only am I getting stronger in the gym, but I'm getting measurable increases in muscle mass. Like my arms got bigger. Um, and I, like I said, I've lost 30 pounds. They were almost 17 inches on the bulk. Um, but now they are. I lost a lot of size initially on my arms just from losing a ton of weight. And steadily though, I have put on another quarter inch on each of my arms, um, you know, while losing weight. And I have also put on a quarter inch on my calves while losing weight. So that tells me something, right? I, what are the two muscles I'm prioritizing most right now in my training? Chest, biceps, and calves. Those are the two muscles I'm prior, or sorry, three muscles I'm prioritizing most. Chest is not only first in the week, but I'm also giving it really a lot of rest and I'm hitting it hard, right? And I'm hitting it first in the session. Um, you know, not triceps or shoulders or anything first, I'm hitting chest first. Um, biceps, instead of putting them at the end of my sessions on like back day and just doing like two burnout sets, I'm do putting them first and doing, you know, single arm preacher curls and just really getting good at those. I went from 35 for eight on the preacher curl to now I'm doing 50 for eight. You know, this is just one arm. So like on the bulk, I wanna be able to do, and I'm not gonna put a limit on it. I'm not gonna put a limit on it. I wanna do 75 for eight on the bulk with the same strict form, right? Um, I don't see an issue with that. Uh, if people wanna say, oh bro, well don't you think you should stop and that's too much? It's never too much. If it's too much, then that's when you stop making gains. If you say, oh well, bro, you shouldn't be doing this amount of weight. Like no bro, if I'm doing it with the same form, what matters? Seriously, like 
it does not matter that I'm doing it with the same form. Does it matter that I'm stronger? Absolutely, because I'm going to get bigger. But if you have a problem with me getting bigger, you'll tell me to do less weight. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, that got me a little fired up because I've met some people who arbitrarily just say, yeah, I'll never deadlift more than 500 pounds. Well, why? Like, why not? Do you think for sure you're going to guarantee to get an injury above 500? Probably not. The chances of you getting an injury while deadlifting are really low unless you're going for genuine records uh, like in powerlifting meets because then you're doing three max outlifts in one day, basically. And you're you know, high strong, you're in this environment where you're excited and nervous at the same time and you're getting all this fatigue building up and your body might not be ready for it because you traveled and you whatever, like that is like a more injury prone environment, right? And you also, you can't mentally prepare yourself for the lift because they call on you randomly. Whereas if you're in the gym and you say, hmm, you know what? I was able to move 695 pretty easily last week or, you know, two weeks ago. I want to go for 700 today, right? Dude, pull 700. You will not get injured. Pretty much guaranteed. The times you get injured are the times where you're genuinely lifting a weight that you know for a fact your body can't handle, but you're doing it anyway, right? So like whenever I was rowing five plates, um, one arm, right? I prefaced, I'm like, okay, you know, this is going to be potentially ego lifting. Okay. Like if I do this set, I'm coming in with the knowledge that I did not prepare my body for this, but I think I'm strong enough to row it. Okay. With good form. And guess what I did? I took the bet. I said, I know I could row this with good form. So I did, I rode it with good form, even though I'd never touched that weight or anything even close to it. You know, I'd only ever done three and a half plates at most. And then I jumped straight to five because I'm like, you know what? I think I could do more. Plus, single arm is a lot easier than two arms because you can get more of your body involved. But anyway, though, here's my point. Be careful, right? If you're going to go for a super high weight, build up to it over time. But don't overly spend too much time on it. Especially if you're a beginner, 99% of the weights that you touch aren't dangerous, right? Like the only thing that could potentially be dangerous as a beginner, uh, like just overtly dangerous, is like an extremely heavy squat for your for within like your first, I'd say probably three months of training. Okay, three to six months of training, you shouldn't be doing like anything above like three plates. And that's pretty gracious, man. Uh, and I, I only say that because your body, even if you're already super strong naturally, um, if you've never done squats in your life and you load three plates on or four plates, you might get injured, right? Even if you can handle it, just because your body doesn't know exactly, you know, what to do yet. doesn't know the squat pattern. Whereas though, if you're anything, I'd say past six months, you might be genetically gifted, man. Just fully embrace it, right? Don't, and that's the thing I, I really wish, if there was one thing I wish I never did, um, it would have been like for, for years, literally, I did not make gains because I would go, I'd put arbitrary limits in my head. You know, if I'm 16, I shouldn't be doing more than 225. I don't want to get injured. And, you know, I probably shouldn't be squatting because, you know, squatting is dangerous. And if I deadlift in the form if, and my back isn't perfectly straight, then it's dangerous and all this. Stuff. I put all this nonsense in my head. But the reality is your body can adapt to almost anything you put it through, especially if you're really young. And that doesn't mean go out and ego lift and with insanely stupid form and, you know, train harder uh, with your joints and your ligaments than your muscles, right? But my whole message is adapt and don't limit yourself, right? And when I started to say, I'm just going to do whatever I feel that I'm capable of doing and pushing that limit, right, safely and giving myself time to build up and taking the right, uh, you know, the right jumps that I need to, taking the right risks. I, my gains have been incredible, right? I literally went from doing, I'll just tell, break down some more lifts. So, you know, three and a half plates, the five plates and the single arm hammer strength row. Then we have the preacher curl, like I said, from 35 to eight for 50 for eight, with the same form. Then we have, um, you know, hack squat. I started at two plates, not even, I think I did one plate in 25, built up to now I do five plates. And, you know, this is all in the span of from when I was bulked to cutting now, because I didn't start really taking leg that seriously up until uh, last year. And, you know, I haven't been training legs very seriously at all for very long. And now I'm finally finding kind of the right groove for my leg day, 
right? And it's probably my favorite day at this point. So Cav Rays went from 115, I believe, all the way up to now I'm doing 425. You watch on my most recent leg day, I'm doing 425 now. And, you know, for a lot of reps, really controlled. And, uh, guys, I could sit here and just tell you about all the lifts that I've improved forever, right? But I'm just letting you know that you will get a new wave of beginner gains. Or if you're currently in your beginner gains phase right now, you will absolutely explode if you actually give yourself the time of day and the confidence to say, hey, I can do this way or, hey, I can improve this much. You know what I mean? So, you know, again, don't limit yourself. I'm going to keep saying it. Don't limit yourself. All right. So we got a protein shake here. This is my first time having one in probably like a week or something just because I've been getting my protein in through just normal food without having to drink these. But anyway, bottoms up. I was so thirsty. I'm not even gonna lie, I think it was the fastest I ever drank this protein shake. What is that? That was like 24 ounces. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I tried making a video earlier, just in the morning, but for some reason I just mentally was not like ready to make a video. And I tried talking and I just was like, it felt like I was trying to make a video for the first time again. Like I just was not able to formulate sentences properly. So anyway, anyway uh, very, very tired this morning, but I feel very good now. So despite the fact that I did just take a lot of melatonin because I'm trying to get to bed early for church tomorrow. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys for tomorrow, which is Probably just a ton of steps and maybe a little bit of conversation. All right, take care.